All right. Uh -oh. oh my goodness, I lost JR. <laughs> he didn't consent. He was I like, know, no. like, no, I'm not going to be recorded. I'm out. <laughs> Press the wrong button. <laughs> yeah. Let's see how long it takes for him to come back. <laughs> Uh, while we're waiting for him, um, you said read off all the all the positions, correct? So, yeah. uh, so right now, uh, the president is myself. Uh, I am the incumbent. If anyone wants to run, you're welcome to. And then I just wait. Yep, wait, and then go to the next one. Next one. In our well, let's just for practice. Let's go ahead and do it that way. But but we're such a small group, we could pretty much say that we're all going to do it. But just for practice, I'll go, go ahead and do it. You guys got the uh, JR's message, right? He's having connection issues. Mm -hmm. He's going to come back with a mask on. And then, um, okay, so uh, uh, the uh, first position is president. I am currently the president, Justin. And um, if anyone wants to run, feel free to speak up now. All right, next is VP of Education. Dennis Hamm is the incumbent. If anyone wants to run for VP of Ed, please speak up now. Uh, Eric Gong is currently our treasurer incumbent. If anyone wants to speak, uh, run, run for treasurer, speak up now. What's up, JR? Yeah, I had connection issues. JR. Connection issues, yes. Someone took your job, we voted while you were gone. <laughs> That's all, right. That's all right. I'm back. I had connection issues. <laughs> JR, uh, JR is also an incumbent. If anyone wants to run for his position, <laughs> yeah, I, uh, yeah. Someone take my position, please. No. <laughs> take my job, please. <laughs> Uh, the four of us already um, elected to stay in. Uh, of course, you're still free to run, but all of us decided. Uh, Jackie and Adam were not at the last officer's meeting, so we did not get their opinion on that. Uh, Tiffany is our standing in uh, secretary right now. Um, if anyone wants to run against her, speak up now. Or forever hold your peace. Well, until next week. Until next week. <laughs> All right, then. and um, okay. Let's say so. Jackie and Adam aren't here, so how would Can we? Can I them? run? I, I mean, I'll I'll have like, am I a stand-in? That, that sounds temporary. We want to remove the stand-in from uh, your. Yeah, platform. we want to remove the. Yeah. Stand -in. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> if I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it. <laughs> okay, so perfect. Um, so yeah. Tiffany is nominated. So how do we? How do we? How do we? We're do not that? voting until another couple of weeks, so we're good. Oh, okay. What, what okay. I will do though, it's since you're okay with nominated. Tiffany. I will go ahead and put your name officially in the Toastmaster roster that says you're treasurer right. I mean, secretary right now. And then and Jackie's on her. Jackie's on her way. Uh, we'll reconfirm it again when we vote to, in a couple of weeks, and then for the next six months. Okay. But I'll, I will put you down okay. as an official secretary for now. Okay. Perfect. And of course, if Cherie comes back, she can have her job. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> if she comes back. Or when she comes back. <laughs> yeah. That'd be crazy if she came back and she'd be like, hey, am I, can I be the second? Like if she actually tried to get it, that'd be. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Adam, I believe his, um, his officer position is Sergeant at Arms, correct? Yes. Um, so uh, if he's not here, do we still hold the nomination? He's, he's currently the incumbent. And then um, well, we I don't can, know. We can send him an email or text him and see what he wants to do. I'll, I'll do okay. that. And then if anyone wants to run against him, uh, speak up now. And then finally, Jackie was public relations and she's on her way, uh, but she is the incumbent. And if anyone wants to um, run for her position, speak up now. And then that's it, we close? Yep, pretty much. And then we'll say that we'll have the election if you want to have it next week or, or in two weeks. Um, I don't mind having it next week, but if the turnout for the meeting next week is the same as right now, I, I'll wait two weeks. Next week is... Day, the day before Thanksgiving. Uh, oh, oh, I see. Okay, what's up, Jackie? Hey, Jackie. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, what's, yeah, that's right. We have the next week off. We were, I think that's why. Already two weeks from today. I see. Oh, yeah, so it is two weeks from today. We don't have a choice on that. We don't have a meeting next week. Yeah. 
Welcome, Jackie. Jackie, we were just wrapping up uh, nominations for club officers. Okay. Um, we didn't get word from you if you wanted to stay as the incumbent. Yes, I would if, like to. Yes, you would like to? Okay. Um, I'm sorry, I fell asleep. Um, I, heard, I heard the phone go off and it was Adam saying he was having connection issues. And no, I'm going, oh my me. God. <laughs> it was me. I... Um, all right, well, welcome, Jackie. Thank and, you. Uh, and with that, I will close the nominations for club officers and welcome up to our virtual lectern, our Toastmaster for the evening. Please help me welcome Advanced Communicator Gold, Advanced Leader Bronze, uh, John Robles. John Robles, everybody. Hey, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Good evening, everyone. I am your Toastmaster for the evening. I am responsible for conducting the meeting and also the theme of the meeting. Since we are close to Thanksgiving, that is gonna be our theme. Thanksgiving. Spe more specifically, your favorite and least favorite Thanksgiving foods. Favorite and least favorite Thanksgiving foods. And I'll put this up in the chat. That's the theme. And if writing doesn't That's come, it. that could be table topics. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And that could be a possibility too. Or, you, or if you want to, you could also uh, favorite Thanksgiving memories. Either or, you can have your pick. Thanksgiving foods are your favorite or least favorite Thanksgiving memories. And with that, since, the, since our word of the day person has arrived, I will introduce her to the virtual lectern. Please help me welcome our, the Word of the day as presented by Jackie Larson. Jackie, you're muted. You're muted, Jackie. There you Sorry. Go. <laughs> I, I lost the screen for a moment. I couldn't find it back again. All right, word of the day. I fell asleep and didn't make word for the day. So let's have the word of the day as, hmm. well, make it easy on us. The word of the day is favorite. It's favorite being that which you love above others, you're that which you would prefer above anything else. That which gives you the greatest pleasure. Ah. Favorite, okay. Okay. I'll make it easy. Everyone, e make it easy for everyone to use too. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. Okay. Now, back to the Toastmaster. Thank you. Okay. We have our word of the day as presented by Jackie, which is favorite. Since we don't have a humorist or an inspirational thought, please, I'd like to welcome our general evaluator for the evening. He will introduce his evaluation team, the two evaluators, the timer, the vote counter, and the out counter grammarian. Please help me welcome to the virtual lectern our general evaluator for the evening, who will conduct the evaluation portion of this meeting. Let me welcome Eric Gong. Thank you, Mr. Toastmaster. Thank you, JR. I'm your general evaluator for this evening, and my job is to introduce my evaluation team and to give a general evaluation of the meeting, which is very self-explanatory. So this evening, we do have two evaluators. The first evaluator who will be evaluating Justin's speech is Jackie Larson. Uh, Jackie, can you tell us a little bit about uh, what your role is for this evening and a little bit about Justin's speech. Hi, uh, my role this evening is to listen carefully to Justin's speech and then give him a give him feedback, um, expressing uh, what he did that was that worked, and then making suggestions for things that he could do better. His speech today will be five to seven minutes, and it's about the tools to get what you want through rhetoric. 
So mm -hmm. it will, it's a topic that will revolve around Aristotle and his ideas about speaking. Thank you very much, Jackie. Uh, may, I, may I add something to that? So yeah. um, the speech today is, uh, the, the whole point of it is me dealing with a difficult audience. And there are, um, in the chat, I've posted uh, the roles that everyone can play. Uh, pick one. You can't pick the silent type, though. Pick one. And um, everyone but Jackie, because she'll be evaluating me. Uh, Jackie, uh, you won't be evaluating the content of my speech. You'll be evaluating how I deal with the hecklers, with Thank the difficult. Everybody frozen? Who is Tiffany? Learn about different communication styles. And I'm, I was supposed to identify my primary style. So the title of my speech is, oh, is stepping out of my communication comfort zone. Okay. Uh, and how long? It's going to be five to seven minutes. All right, thank you very much, Tiffany. Uh, let's see. Our timer for this evening, I believe, is also will also be Dennis Ham. Dennis, can you tell us a little bit about your role this evening? Yeah, hopefully this is going to work. As timekeeper. Yeah. Hopefully this will work tonight. My computer is unstable, like John's, so we'll see how this is going to work. Uh, I'll let's see. I will probably just end up changing my background instead of doing it the other way that I was normally going to do it. So what I will do at the five, whoops, wrong one. Let me see. There we go. All right, at, for the five, seven. Dennis, uh, yeah, your connection is still unstable. We, yeah. we didn't get any of what you just said. Okay. Well, I'm going to, I will try to set up another, set up my iPad and try to do it that way for a backup. Oh. Now. Uh. Is anything coming through right now? Okay. The background's green and the color of your shirt is green. Okay, I will try to uh, get this fixed and I'll, I'll run a regular clock and then I'll try to get my iPad running too. So I'll have two ways of getting into you folks. All I think your general duty is, since we have five to seven minute minute speeches, it'll turn green, like Dennis's background in his shirt right now, five minutes. At six minutes, it'll turn yellow, and at seven minutes, it'll turn red. Do we have an off camera this evening? In that case, it's just make it free for all. I like it. That's honor that you won't use a bunch of filler words. Everybody's responsible for their own behavior this evening. And with that, I'll turn the virtual lecture back to our Toastmaster for this evening. Thank you. John Robles. Hey, thank you very much. We come to the fun and instructional part of our program, that is our Justin Magno and Tiffany Janik. Please help me welcome to the virtual lectern our first speaker. Please help me welcome. He's doing a, a role play speech in which he is role playing a speaker that is being interrupted and he is having to deal with a difficult audience. Please tell me welcome to the virtual lectern. Our first speaker of the evening, Justin Magno. 
Thank you so much for that introduction, JR. How's everybody doing tonight? So I thought for my speech this evening, I would give you something all that you could use in your day-to-day -day lives in pretty much anything, whether it was low stakes or high stakes. Tonight, I'm going to share with you uh, what the great philosophers believe was the way to persuade anybody to do anything at any time. Aristotle's rhetorical triangle. I'm going to talk about how it relates to my own life and how I've, how I've used it uh, to improve myself. And I hope at the end, you'll also learn to be able to use it for your own, uh, for your own means. Ooh. Whoa. Whoa. Is if someone was, trying to hack into us? Hey, let's do let's let's do this uh, disco inferno or something like that. It sounded like that. Uh, does any where's that coming from anyway? That sound. I don't Nobody. know. Probably feedback because Dennis has the two two things going now. But got it, got quiet it. Quiet right now. I was gonna say if that was a heckle, that's the most creative heckle I've ever heard. Like, I don't know what it like if that was intentional. I, or thought, I thought it was too. <laughs> well done. Uh, if you do heckle me, I should warn you that you are going to detract from your own learning though, which is gonna suck for you because I'm gonna share with you something that if you never learn this, uh, you're missing out. So as I was talking about, um, let's imagine that you wanted to persuade somebody to do something, right? Uh, I feel that I'm credible to talk about this. What if you don't want to persuade someone to do something? What if I don't want to persuade someone? Yeah. I want to, well, what are you doing here then, JR? What are we doing here? <laughs> you became a Toastmaster. Heckling you. Heckling you. you. Huh? Heckling you. Heckling me? <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, let me ask you something, JR. You wanted to be a Toastmaster to become a better speaker, right? Yeah. And why do you want to be a better speaker? So I can heckle in a, in a <laughs> heckle in people. A, I'll tell you. I'll tell you so why you wanted to be a better. So speaker. So I can use some unique words to heckle people. That's. I'll why. tell you why. <laughs> it's because uh, it's because you want to get what you want. That's really it. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you how to do that. Okay. Tell All me. right. If you're like me and you have a passion for sales, you read a lot of sales book and you kind of realize that all these sales guys are pretty much saying the same thing over and over that Aristotle figured out back in 300 BC. And he came up with this thing that was called a rhetorical triangle. Can anyone raise their hand if they've heard about it? I've spoken about it before, but if anyone studied it before or read about it. Hey, Jackie, Jackie, I liked your post today. With the, I was yesterday, the, the, I think it was like, you know, where it was a cozy living room. Do you remember what I'm talking about? I do know what you're talking oh, about. Actually. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh my goodness. Um, what does that have to do with uh what does that have to do with uh Aristotle's rhetorical triangle, Tiffany? Um, anyways, so uh I remember one of the main things that was taught to me back when I was doing sales was that they they told us that uh, if you, I remember my manager saying that I've been here 30 years, he says, I've been here 30 years and I don't know if it's going to happen at this particular store, but I'm going to die in this business, Justin. I've been in this business 30 years. I'm going to die in this business. <clears throat> and I'm going to tell you the number one thing you need to succeed in sales to get people to do what you want. And he said that, that you need to get people to like you. That's what he said. And, uh, I didn't really know, like he wasn't specific on how to get that done, but I understood that um, he was basically saying that it didn't matter how much you knew about the car. It didn't matter how much you knew about the store or anything like that. What mattered was the connection between you and the other person. It was an emotional thing. And Aristotle, that's the first part of his triangle is emotional appeal. That if you can appeal to someone's emotions, it's, he called it pathos. If you can appeal to somebody's uh, pull on their heartstrings, that was one good way to do it. Uh, really skilled politicians will do this all the time. The things they'll say won't make sense, but it doesn't matter because you got, you get to the person's heart the, the brain kind of stops working yeah like donald but it's trump not, uh yeah i'm trying to keep i'm trying to keep names out of it but um <laughs> not I, that, politicians will do this really skilled ones will do it um but of course if you're intelligent if you're educated if you if the if the heart strings aren't being pulled enough then it, you won't buy into it which is why the second part of the triangle the first part was emotion the second part was logic you need logic and emotion uh, if you can appeal to logic and emotion, you're already extremely powerful. What does a logical argument look like? Well, it kind of looks like, well, you know, 
if, uh, if you do this, then this is what's going to happen. Uh, anytime a politician goes up on stage and does that, they'll do that. Or like, let's pretend you're selling Hondas like I was and you, and you said something like, oh, we have the best engines, which is true. We had the best interiors. That makes sense that you would get it. That's not emotional. That's logic. You, you would want the best. Uh, that, but, and the interesting thing is that logic is actually, I consider to be the most important one, but any good salesman will tell you that people don't buy with their brains. They buy with their hearts and then they justify with their brains. If you've ever heard that before. Uh, but that's, that alone is actually not enough. Logic and emotion are two very powerful ones. But let me ask you something. If let's say a homeless guy was on the street, giving you all the logical uh, advice you could get, giving you all the, pulling on all your heartstrings, but you wouldn't listen to him because he was extremely poor. The third part of the triangle is what's called credibility. So the three parts of the triangle are emotion, logic, and credibility. If you appeal to these three things, then Aristotle believed you could persuade anyone to do anything. He called it rhetoric. His definition of rhetoric was using persuasive language to get what you wanted, which is what we're training to do here at Toastmasters. And so uh, the third one being credibility. I'll give you an example of what credibility is. Uh, when my manager told me that I, um, that he's like, oh, I've been in this business 30 years. That's not a logical argument, but you're going to listen to him because he's been here 30 years. That's what you're thinking in your head, right? Uh, my mom loves Dr. Oz. I can't stand that guy. But his number, her number one argument to me all the time is, He's a doctor. Why wouldn't you listen to him? That's what credibility looks like. It doesn't matter if his argument's good. It doesn't matter if, um, if it's an emotional appeal. It's that he's been doing this for a long time. Uh, Donald Trump, since you brought him up, JR, is another big one. A, a big argument I hear for him isn't that he's saying something smart or isn't that he's like pulling, they, like a lot of times, not just with him, but with everyone, they don't like to admit when their emotions are part of it. But what do I hear all the time? They're like, why wouldn't you listen to him? He's a businessman. Logic, you appeal to someone's logic, emotions, and credibility, you could persuade them of any idea you wanted to give them, whether it was to buy something, whether it was something in your day-to-day -day life. Let's say you want your kid to take a certain major or you, you, you and your significant other, like you're arguing about something you want, you want to go out or you don't want to go out, whatever it is. If you use these three things, you'd be good. Uh, that being said, uh, I'd say it's really helpful. Ever since I learned about this, um, I've, I've always tried to use it as much as possible. When I fail to use it, I, I know when it's not working. If something doesn't work, like let's say I ask for something and I don't get what I want, um, I can always look back at that triangle and figure out where I, was, where I came up short. Uh, the biggest proof that I have is that uh, when my manager told me to focus on emotion first and I already knew about the rest of the triangle, my sales record went up. Uh, I, I like when I started, I had never sold a car before. And then five months in, I not only was the top salesman at my store, I was the top salesman in the entire auto mall from following this. So if you walk away from anything uh, from any of this today, uh, I hope that you learn to incorporate this triangle in anything you do. Um, I don't know how much any of us really realize it, but we're always trying to persuade someone of something. Even now, as I'm talking to you, hey, listen to me, like I just told you that it just made me the top salesman at my last job. That's credibility right? I'm trying to paint you a picture of what you can use it for. That's emotion. That's not logical. And then of course, I'm, I'm perpetuating the idea that if you continue to use logic, uh, that it will work out for you. That's the whole triangle. The person who uses that skill to the top of their ability, the one who does it the best will be the greatest salesman, the greatest persuader, the greatest showman that this world has ever seen. And this is attributed to uh, the great Aristotle, which is also credibility. So with that, um, I appreciate you for giving me your time today. And I hope that you've learned something and you can use this in your own life. With that, I'd like to give it back to our Toastmaster. Please help me welcome uh, John Robles. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Good speech, Justin. Good speech, even, even with my interruption. That was good. There were only two interruptions, actually. I was waiting for more. Mm. I take it, I hope that's a good sign and not like, I don't know. So far, so good. Please take a moment to... Uh, Private message, Justin, on what you like, what you what you thought he could improve on, and no. I, he can be no. challenged next time. If another presentation that gets evaluated, What's that he gives another presentation to the comments or to the interruption. Oh, okay. Evaluate him on that. Oh, oh, oh! So I'm not done. I gotta, I gotta talk no. about the the heckles. Okay um an address to the heckles well i would love to uh i would love to address uh what you guys said and did 
the first one threw me off. I was impressed if that was intentional, uh, wherever that feedback came from. I, I think it came from Dennis. I was not expecting that. I was like what, what JR and what Tiffany did. I was expecting more of that. When the feedback came, I'm like, oh my gosh, I, I bit off more than I could chew. I didn't realize <laughs> that they were going to use sound effects like that. I mean, how do you even respond to that? Um, when I, when I was preparing for this, I was kind of thinking that I would just go full dictator be like, oh, if you speak again, I'm going to kick you out or, or like, like a threat. Uh, as to what you guys were saying, JR, you said, um, what if I don't want to convince people? Uh, fair enough, man. Uh, Persuasion is not the only type of speech out there, but I, I believe, uh, and this is my own worldview. I don't even think it's 100% right. It's just kind of how I do things by default. I kind of see the world in terms of sales. I feel like everybody's always trying to get something, uh, whether you're talking to your kids or your grandma or, or someone on the street, you're, you're trying to persuade them of something. And that's not a bad thing, uh, as long as your, your intentions aren't bad. Um, but that's not the only thing like, uh, but let's pretend like you're a teacher, Jackie, you're a teacher. And um, I, I don't need to tell you or anybody that's ever tried to teach someone who doesn't want to learn. You, you don't need to, it's not enough to know the information. You need to sell the information. You know what I mean? For them to, for them to buy into it. Everybody here is going to forget about this speech unless they feel like something useful came out of it. Like my speech I'm talking about. So that's why I kind of see the world in those, in that, in that light. Uh, I don't think it's the only way. So JR, you have a point. What if you don't want to persuade anybody? Yeah, fair enough. I wanted to tell you to get out. Like if you don't want to listen to the speech, then bow out, get, get your connection issues and get out of here. Right. But uh, I'm joking, of course. And, uh, and uh, Tiffany, thank you for, for heckling. Uh, I was, I felt like it was getting quiet, especially at the end. Nobody, nobody said anything. You were talking about Jackie's post. I assume you were talking about, you just made it up. Um, unless she posted something for real. She posted something for real. It was a calmed by nature video. And I thought it was so cool. <laughs> but anyway, uh, I think I was the talker, where which you... totally wouldn't happen in your speech. You, it you, pro you, you know what I mean? On this, I, I don't think that's that, whatever, whatever. I, I know it's awkward. I know it's awkward. Before you guys showed up and I was telling Dennis that you guys had to heckle me today, I was like, you know what? We have a pretty polite group. I feel like it's going to be harder for them to heckle than, um, than to not because we don't interrupt. We know that that's not polite. Uh, but it happens, though. It happens. I, I remember one of, the, one of the, like, my memorable speeches I've given in the past. Like, it was in college. And I was actually, and in college, I don't know if you guys remember or know this, but in college, like, you, you never assume someone's a good speaker. So the polite thing is never interrupt. Like you never challenge the person. And I gave a speech and this guy started challenging it. And I was just like, I didn't realize it in the moment. I, I just dealt with it and it was fine. It was actually one of my favorite speeches, but looking back, I was like, wow, that guy was incredibly rude. Like you're not supposed to do something like that. And then um, there was even one where I was heckled, not even by the audience. I was heckled by a group member, like someone in my group and he, and he interrupted me. So I know that it doesn't normally happen, but it happens and it's good to be prepared for it. So um, I appreciate your input. What did, uh, what did, cause I, I see the timer still running. What did Jackie uh, post of? Like where, where'd she post it? I'm asking. On Facebook. Uh, on Facebook. Oh, on Facebook. <laughs> what, what, what did she post? And what was so important well, about it? That you had to bring it up during my speech. <laughs> <laughs> Calmed by nature is an awesome YouTube channel. And it has these beautiful still imagery where every it's animated and it's just, it's just really, uh, I don't know, it puts you in a place. And Jackie posted one. And anyways, I was commenting on that. I, okay. I think I was the talker, which uh, okay. I, I think there I, was I, one I, that I, was the, the chatterer. I appreciate but, it. You know, like I was saying, I think it's different when you're on the, um, on the computer, because it would be different if I was sitting there talking to Jackie, mm -hmm. but I was like totally doing it, derailing you. So sorry about that. No, you're good. You're good. Uh, maybe on the computer, it would be like a comment. Like you, like you would be IMing her while, while I was talking and that would be harder to spot. Um, realistically, I could see like, if you were a teacher and students weren't paying attention, they were just like, Hey, did you, did you catch the game? Or I don't know what kids talk about now, but um, you, you, it's easy to imagine. Um, I appreciate the heckles. I was, I, I wanted more. If you feel, if you want to heckle me now, you're free to. Um, I, I mentioned before I want to be a comedian and nobody gets more heckled than comedians. Nobody. Cause they, they go up there and there's no security if they're not like a big time comedian already. And, uh, and they're saying controversial things up there. And there are people who are drunk in the audience and they're just yelling out whatever it is they want to yell out. I would love to be, have a thick skin against that. So today was uh, uh, appreciated. It was child's play compared to that. 
my time is up. Thank you all for participating and bearing with me tonight. Uh, let me hand it back to JR right now. Thank you all. Goodbye. Thank you, Justin, for that uh, rebuttal. Very good rebuttal. That's, that'll, that's a good way to think on your feet. Please uh, PM Justin with any comments, what you liked about his speech, what you thought he could improve on, and how he can challenge himself. Okay, does anyone have any favorite Thanksgiving memories or Thanksgiving foods? I mean, Tiffany. I always hated Thanksgiving. I'm going to be the bearer of you know, the complainer right now. I can't stand turkey. I don't like stuffing. I was always the worst complainer when it came to Thanksgiving. And I would say it was probably about five years ago, my parents came out with prime rib. And now Thanksgiving is the best ever because every Thanksgiving we have prime rib and it's delicious. Ooh. No stuffing. Nobody brings out stuffing anymore. I don't know if that's because of me probably, but um, yeah. So prime rib is, is our Thanksgiving treat. Ooh, that sounds good. What, what sides do you have with it usually? Um, rolls, a uh, salad, like a spinach salad. No, I, I guess nothing really that stands out to me, mashed potatoes, you know, but just, just, just without the stuffing. <laughs> oh, there you go. Anyone else have any favorite, uh, or least favorite Thanksgiving food? Uh, yeah, I love stuffing. Um, Thanksgiving's incomplete without stuffing. I only eat Stuffing during Thanksgiving. I'm, I'm just kidding. Well, kind of. I do like stuffing, but I just did that to contradict. Uh, does anybody does anybody know what Portos is in LA? Has anyone heard of that? Please, somebody. Yeah, there's one in Burbank. So. Uh, yep, that's the one. Uh, Portos is a bakery. Uh, they have three. There is one on Burbank, and they just have the best stuff. If you ever go to LA, I recommend it. There's always a line out the door. They're super popular. And uh, we always get some kind of Portos thing from LA uh, before we before we celebrate things. Because we usually, I should mention, we usually celebrate Thanksgiving in San Diego. So we always pass LA and we always pick up something there to contribute it in San Diego. So um, Porto. No one, no one in Downey instead. Sorry? No, so they opened up a couple locations. There's the original one in Glendale mm -hmm. and they opened up a new one down in Downey. In down that's in LA too, right? They, I think they have three or four. Yeah. Yeah. The, new, the newest one is all the way down there. The, the one, the one in Burbank is always really, really super full. You've been there? No, I grew up, I grew up in Burbank. It used to be a thrifties. If anybody remembers like the drugstore. But I'm glad someone, someone knows what I'm talking about. It's, it's an excellent place. I recommend it fully. Back oh, to you. Cheese and potato balls. <laughs> Cheese rolls, man. The cheese rolls and the uh, moose cake, the triple chocolate. Well, now you guys are getting me hungry. You know, I just ate dinner not too long you ago. Goes the theme. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know. No, no Cuban. Hey. You can always get a Cuban sandwich. Remember, they're a Cuban bakery. Mm. That's true. <laughs> That's true. Okay, roll. Moving right along. Our second speaker is speaking from the Pathways Pro Dynamic Leadership Track. She's at level two. The title of her, uh, at level two, understanding your communication style. It's a five to seven minute speech. The title of her speech is stepping out of my communication comfort style. At least that's what it reads on the, on the agenda. Please help me to the virtual lectern, our second speaker for the evening. Tiffany Janik, stepping out of my communication comfort style, stepping out of my com communication comfort style, Tiffany Janik. Thank you very much. Okay, so over a year ago, I had a meeting with a potential client. And I, just the week prior, I had a, a great pitch and I was feeling confident that I was going to land the sale. But as I got, uh, as I, I, I was prepared, I had the contract, I had about five pages of questions. 
And as we began the meeting, I realized very quickly that my potential client was full of ideas. Oh, am I on mute? Okay, for some reason it's not on me, sorry. It was full of ideas. And I was full of ideas. And I can be a little bit long-winded, especially when I'm nervous. And so pretty soon our meeting was not going very quickly. And we weren't, either of us were, neither of us were getting the questions or, or the ideas out that we wanted to. It was stuck. And to make matters worse, it got to a point where I had suggested one of my ideas and it didn't sit well with the potential client. In fact, he got up from his chair, started pacing around, and he said something along the lines of, I don't think this is going to work. So that really straightened me up quick. I knew I needed to stop and change the way that I was approaching this meeting. So I needed to change my initiating communication style to get out of my comfort zone into a supportive communication style, which would be a, more of an active listener. So I apologized and I kept my mouth shut for the rest of that meeting. Now, as an initiating speaker, it's been a challenge for me to balance my communication style and some of the mannerisms that can come with it. Do any of you guys share the strongest being your initiating communication style? No? Okay, so let me share with you, an initiating communicator can be lively, engaging, and enthusiastic. We can tend to be creative and full of ideas. And we're simply delighted if you recognize our efforts. However, we can be fast talkers. We can tend to be long-winded. We can have, uh, our love for spontaneity can totally derail our conversations. If you have had an experience where you're in the middle of a sentence and you say, wait, what was I talking about? You might be an initiative communicator. So I kind of shared with you my communication style being in the professional setting. In my personal experience, in my personal life, my initiating communication style sometimes works well with me. And the I would say the strengths would be I can get into a room full of strangers, everybody looking down at their papers, no, you know, sterile, dull environment, and I can get people to start communicating with each other and relating with each other and turn it into a fun, engaging environment. And maybe even they leave with a friend or two. Unfortunately, I can be some of the things that I had mentioned before. I can be a fast talker. And I think the reason why is because I'm trying to make up for me being so long-winded. I have conversations that can go on a million tangents and I can be a very poor listener. Now, I want to become a life coach and that takes active listening. I want my goal for my clients is I want them to come up with the solutions. I want them to have those aha moments and not me pointing out, you know, what they need to change or anything. This all has to be on them. So that's going to take me out of this communication, this initiative communi communication style into more of a supportive communicator style. So I ask you, what mannerisms related to your communication style are holding you back. We can often get stuck in our ways. We don't like the unfamiliar. We don't like to change. We like our cozy communicative style. It's been serving us or not serving us for years. And it's something we're comfortable with. But by pivoting to a new style, just within that single conversation at that meeting that day, I was able to land one of the most amazing job opportunities of my life. Yes, not, is it frozen? Oh, sorry. I thought everybody was frozen on the top. <laughs> I apologize. Okay. 
yes, not in that not less than perfect meaning, I was able to save the conversation or save the sale and gain the client. So to my fellow communicators, I challenge you, get uncomfortable, dare to change, be courageous, and explore the strengths that each communication style has to offer. Opportunity awaits. Back to you, general evaluator. Thank you, Tiffany. That was a really good and informative speech. Two excellent speakers tonight. Mr. Timer, we're both speakers on time. Tiffany was on time and for the most part, Justin was too. His last part was on time. The other part interrupted. Okay, who, who is our vote counter for the evening? Yes, you are, it'd be easier that way. Okay, yeah, yeah whoever, uh, please vote for the person that you thought was the best speaker and please send them in a direct message to me and I will announce the winners at the end of the meeting. Okay, does anyone have any favorite uh, or least favorite Thanksgiving foods? Uh, I'll go. Um, my favorite, I, I love Thanksgiving. This, this is my favorite, favorite holiday of the year. I love to just eat to my heart's content on Thanksgiving Day. And I have often ate less the day before so I could eat like a pig on Thanksgiving Day. I love to eat and I love to watch football and just curl up in my PJs and sit, eat, watch football all day on Thanksgiving. And since I have, <clears throat> since I have two kittens now, they can curl up with me and watch football with me. They did that uh, last Sunday, in fact, for a little while. They curled up in my lap and they were on my lap while I was watching football. So that's, Thanksgiving is my favorite holiday. My, mo my most favorite holiday of the year. Moving right along, this is the fun part of our speak of our evening, our table topics, where you are being you will be called on to speak for one to two minutes on a particular topic of choice. Please help me welcome to the virtual lectern our table topics master for the evening, and he has graciously stepped up and stepped in for our guest Ryan, who was not able to make it tonight. Please help me welcome to the virtual lectern or our table topics master for the evening, Justin Magno. Hello, everybody. I will be your table topics uh, master this evening. You guys know how this works by now. We're here to improve our prepared speaking as well as our impromptu speaking. And I will be taking all volunteers now. Oh, and just a heads up, this is going to be a would you rather uh, table topics session. Okay, okay I'll go. Oh, go ahead, Jackie. Go ahead. We'll give it to Jackie right now. All right, Jackie, uh, pick a number. Three. Number three. Okay, uh, you ready? So this would you rather is would you rather be a reverse centaur or a reverse mermaid go would i rather be a reverse centaur or a reverse mermaid <laughs> there's so many things you could do with that uh i think i would rather be a reverse mermaid um because the other end of a mermaid is just the end of her tail. Um, it's, it's like coming out the, it's like having your head down where her feet would be. Uh, whereas being the reverse of a centaur would literally be, I don't know. Oh, wait a minute. Let me get a picture of this in my head. Okay. All right. I guess I'd rather be a reverse centaur. 
because no matter which direction you're pointing, you're still going to be deciding where you're going. So just because your head okay. is, just because your, your, your horse's butt is to the left instead of to the right or vice versa, your head is still going to be pointing first going somewhere. And so you would have more control, I would think. Um, you'd be on the ground and, and still directing yourself. So I think I would rather be a reverse centaur. Thank you, Jackie. <laughs> uh, next person that would like to answer. I'll go. JR? All right, JR, your question is this. Would you rather be in jail for a year or lose a year off your life? Ooh. Go. I don't know about that one. Hmm. I value my freedom. At this point in my life, who knows how long I have left to live. I could, I could die tomorrow. In fact, I had a friend who died of a sudden heart attack a few days ago. He was doing fine one moment and then the next moment he passed, he was gone. So I think I'd rather have my freedom and lose one year of my life as, as I would live, I would, even though I would lose that one year, I would live my life to the fullest in that one year. I would do the things that I would want to do, such as helping other people, such as helping teenagers and young men, playing as much tennis as I want to in that one year, maybe even doing some traveling in, in that one year and spending a little more time with my two kittens in that one year or in that one less year that I have. You know, I can spend, I can encompass more life with one less year than I could if I was jailed for one year and I had a routine to just sit in my jail cell and maybe do some exercises and read and, and eat three meals a day and what have you. I could, rather than doing that, I could be out and about and doing what I want to do and what I need to do and, and live life to my fullest in that one year. So that's my answer. Thank you, Mr. Topics Master. Thank you, JR. Uh, next person. Well, we got enough people that everyone has to I do. I can do it. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Eric. Uh, who am I giving it to? Oh, it doesn't matter. All of us have to do it, I think, at this point, since our group is so small. All right, very well, I'll throw it out. Would you rather be forced to dance every time you heard music or be, first to, or be forced to sing along to any song you heard? I guess I'm it. Is that one more appealing to you, Tiffany? No. <laughs> no I'll answer it then. If I had a choice between having to dance or having to sing along. That's correct. There's less shame in singing along, I think. <laughs> in my opinion, because you can always do it ironically, right? People like really awful pop music, ironically. So you can certainly just sing along with that sort of stuff. There's lots of things that, um, if you do it for everything, then there's no shame in doing it for anything, right? So. It's a lot less physically exerting, I would think, instead of being forced to dance. Can you imagine if you had to, if crunk, I don't know if everybody's familiar with that, came on, crunk music suddenly came on, and then you have to twerk, and that just seems really awkward, versus just having to sing really, really salacious lyrics that are just very vulgar and just people would really think less of you because of it. It still can't be wor worse than just having to get on your knees and then suddenly start twerking or doing something along those lines. So if it were me, I'd much rather just sing along, even if it's just awful, awful music, than having to dance to whatever it happens to be that I just happen to pass by and listen to. 
And with that, I'll just return the virtual lecture to you, Mr. Topics Master. <laughs> Thank you, Eric. Uh, next person. I think we still need Dennis and Tiffany. Dennis to say he'll do it. <laughs> okay, okay, I'll do it. I'll do it. All right. Would you rather? Well, this one's a little bit. All right. Would you rather be held in high regard by your parents or your friends? Um. I guess if I was going to say, if I could be held in high regard, would it be my parents or with my friends? My parents are just two people. I have more friends. So I think it would be better to be um, regarded, to have a high regard with my friends. And I hope as I, you know, as I become a better communicator and I, uh, work on a lot of the stuff that I'm trying to work on to be the best version of myself. Although I don't think that's ever possible. It's always, you know, you're always constantly trying to work on yourself that um, it, it would be, uh, it would be great to, you know, I don't know what do you, it, it, it would be really hard. Like, okay, you're choosing your friends to have high regard, but your parents are going to think you're completely crap so it sucks to have to choose but I would go with my friends all right thank you Tiffany and last but not least Dennis okay what do you want let me find one for you since you were you were a coward tonight I want to find a hard one the timer okay. <laughs> I'm just kidding I'm, I'm using a joke to disguise my lack of preparedness. Um, oh, that's lame. Oh, oh, mm, I don't know. Okay, uh, pick a number between one and two. It doesn't matter. You can give me any one. No matter what, I pick one. <laughs> All right. Uh, I can say one number, you give me eight. No, 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 no. This is really between two, but whatever. All right. I'll get out. Since, since you're not playing the game, would you rather be beautiful or handsome, but you're stupid or intelligent, but ugly? Mr. Table Topic Master and fellow Toastmasters, uh, those are, I guess it depends on how vain you are, whether you want to be beautiful or handsome and stupid or smart and ugly. And I think that for the most part, it'd probably be better to be smart because if you did, if you were very smart and created something, unless somebody wrote a book about you or took a picture or interviewed you, they wouldn't care what you look like. So I think it'd be much better to have a brain and be able to use that brain and be smart rather than be really vain and always be worried about your appearance, having to buy really nice clothes, do a lot of time with your makeup or hair. So it was to me, having a very, being very intelligent and being able to use your intelligence is much more important to me than to have to have everybody look at you and feel that they're always honoring you or putting you on a pedestal because you're so good looking. I'd rather have someone honor me because I'm smart. Back to you, Mr. Topic Master. All right, thank you, Dennis. Dennis, let me ask, did you, uh, did you make it on time? Yes, I was watching my timer. How are you <laughs> muted and I can hear you, how's it? Oh, it's because there's two of you. Never mind. All right. I'm just wondering. All right. Thank you so much. Uh, to review, uh, Jackie would rather be a reverse centaur rather than a reverse mermaid because a centaur lives on land and kind of picks where he's going to go, uh, where she's going to go rather than um, a mermaid, kind of stuck with the current, I guess. And then uh, JR would rather die a year early than spend a year in prison. Um, he would just make sure that he lived life to the fullest. Uh, Eric would rather sing along to every song he heard rather than dance to it because it's less exertion and it, um, it's less humiliating because you don't have to dance to everything, get up and move. Uh, Tiffany would rather have the high regard of her friends rather than her parents because her friends are more numerous, although it's a tough one. And then 
Uh, Dennis would rather be smart but ugly because intelligence can compensate for beauty and it just depends on how vain you are. Uh, I will counter Dennis by saying that ignorance is bliss. And that's all I'm going to say about that. Either way, vote for who you liked best and uh, send those votes over to actually send these ones to me since I didn't go. So uh, I'll be able to count the votes. Oh, Justin, What's up, um, as soon as you find out who the winner is for Cable Topics, uh, private message me. Of course. I'll public message you. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> thank you thank you for those wonderful table topics now we come to the evaluation portion of our meeting please help me welcome back to the virtual lectern our general evaluator eric Gong. all right thank you mr tape uh mr toastmaster now it's time for our general our evaluations of our speakers our first evaluator for this evening as we mentioned before, it's Jackie Larson. Jackie, will you tell us about, will you give us your evaluation of Justin's speech from this evening? Thank you. Uh, Justin, uh, you did an awesome job of redirecting uh, the heckler in the very, from the very beginning and to how you would answer his question. I liked how with Tiffany, you asked her directly what her point was and how it related to the topic. So you kind of placed that focus on her, which would be embarrassing, you would hope. I was also impressed on how you used John's outburst about Trump to make point from your speech. Best of all, I liked how you used the elements of your own speech as an example of how the triangle worked. And I liked how you did that right after you re-spoke when you redirected how, how that triangle was for Aristotle, the three parts of, pers of persuasion, emotion, logic, and credibility. And you use the elements of your own speech to close that out. And so that left a very firm, memorable closing to your speech. That really grabbed it and sunk it into my mind. I will not forget that. I would suggest working on some filler words. You had a few ahs and ums and that sort of thing. I would also work, I would also suggest not being quite so on the attack because it drew away from your credibility in a sense, like in the very beginning where you, when John uh, spoke out and you, Finally, you said, I'm going to answer this question by, and you went in that direction. I think if you had started with that and not like, what the heck are you doing sort of thing, that would have stayed within the flow of your speech and would have been a little more deftly done. Other than that, I enjoyed your speech. I thought it was enlightening. It was very interesting and it was in, informative. And you managed to bring that across in spite of the hecklers. And better than that, you even was able to bring some of your points across because of hecklers, because of things that they said, you just took those words out of their mouth and incorporated them into your own speech. And I was very impressed with that, Justin. Evaluator? Thank you, Jaggy. Thank you, Jackie, with your evaluation of Justin's speech. Now it's time for our second evaluator for this evening. Dennis, will you do the evaluation of Tiffany's speech from this evening? Thank you, Mr. General Evaluator, fellow Toastmasters, and Tiffany. But well, Tiffany, your project tonight was to talk about communication styles and how to identify your style and how it had some impact on you. And I think you picked a very good example for your presentation talking about a potential client and the different things that went along during that present during that discussion with your client. So I think that the, that example was very good and you talked about how you both kind of butted heads because both of you wanted to speak up and so that 
we went back and forth for a while, each trying to promote your idea. And then you finally figured out that, wait a minute, the customer is always right. And I need to let that person speak a little bit more than mine. So I decided you pulled back and let your customer do the talking. And I think that's where you learned about your communication style is that this doesn't work if you're trying to make money with someone. If you have, if it's a different situation and maybe it's about building something and you're gonna be the one living in that situation, then of course you'd wanna have your point go across. But if you want the customer or person to work with you and get further, go along further with them, then you've, you've picked the right way is to kind of drop back a little bit, and let the other person go ahead. So that was a good, very good example of how to talk about that. And as you did that, you talked about the different aspects about that discussion and why you felt that it's better to listen more than talk. So I think you learned a lot with this presentation and you gave us a lot of information to learn about that. And at the very end of that, you also had a call to action for us. You told us what we needed to do if we wanted to keep learning and have good com um, communication with other people. So I think overall, you did a very good job. You seem tonight, I think you seem to enjoy your giving the presentation more than I've noticed before. You, you had a smile on your face, you had gestures, and you came across a lot better, a lot warmer in this presentation that I've seen you do another one. So I think you're really progressing very well and I enjoyed your presentation. Back to you, Mr. General Evaluator. All right, thank you very much, Dennis, for your evaluation. At this point, should everyone should send their votes to JR for the best evaluator for this evening. Let's take a moment to do that. In the meantime, I just wanted to throw a general question out there. Has anybody actually had good Thanksgiving turkey? Or is that one of those things that's just inherently bad? Like somebody, has anybody ever had, purchased like an heirloom, like, or had a heirloom turkey or something because allegedly those things taste good or deep fried one, or it was prepared in some, in such a way where it just didn't taste like dried leftovers. I had a deep fried one one time, but it wasn't for, for Thanksgiving. It was for an Independence Day party years back that I was invited to. The host had deep fried a turkey and he cut it up and, and we made sandwiches out of them and they were delicious. They were moist, tender. Oh, were, they were delicious. I also had a deep fried turkey and I, it's much better. It's a lot more, you know, it, it falls off the bone and it's a lot more moist. The only problem is, I guess, if you don't do that correctly, you're liable to set your own house on fire, right? Because you mm -hmm. need to jerry rig this entire thing to make yeah, it. The, the turkey has to be completely thawed. It can't be partially frozen. It has to be completely thawed and the, the, the oil has to be set at a certain temperature. And then you have to lower it very slowly to get, get it used, you know, used to the heat and then cover it, cover it and then let it cook for however long it was. I think with a host, I think he co cooked it his for 45 minutes because it was a big turkey. Okay. With that, let's, let's just move on from that thought. The timer for this evening. Dennis, was everybody on time? Or? Yes. Okay. okay, thank you. We don't have an awkward counter grammarian this evening. So with the baptism award, no one's keeping track. But as far as I can tell, everyone's done a pretty good job at being mindful of their filler words. So good job, everyone. And just to give an overall report, we have a small group this evening again, but I thought everyone everyone filled in their roles. Everyone did, uh, stepped up and filled in the, the roles where they were needed. Justin, thank you for stepping in and doing table topics to cover that. We heard two good speeches this evening. Uh, everyone seems to be well on, well on track 
in improving their, their public speaking skills. So bravo to that. And with that, I will, I'll turn the virtual lectern back over to Mr. Toastmaster so we can give our awards out this evening. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. General Evaluator. Good job in the evaluation. Good job. Okay, now it's time for the awards. And we have a virtual drum roll, please. First, for voting for best evaluator. Tonight, the best evaluator is Dennis. Congratulations, Dennis, best evaluator. Now for best table topics, drum roll, please. Best table topics, yours truly, they are. Last but certainly not least, our best speaker for the evening, drum roll please. Best speaker for the evening is Tiffany. Congratulations, Tiffany. Um, this was a good meeting. We had our challenges such as my connection issues. Dennis even had a few connection issues. But overall, it was a good meeting. It was fun. It was lively. I always enjoy being here. I always enjoy hanging out with you guys for hour, hour and a half each Wednesday night. Unfortunately, next, one, next Wednesday night is the night before Thanksgiving, so we will not be here. Now, at this point, I would like to return control of the lectern back to our VP of Education so he can fulfill the roles for the next meeting, which is two weeks from today. Please help me welcome back, Dennis. Thank you very much, John. Okay, right now we have some volunteers early last meeting, and I have down that Tiffany and Jackie want to be speakers at our next meeting on the second. Is that still true? Should I do it twice? I don't know. Sometimes I see people do things twice, and I don't know if I'm supposed to or what. What do you mean twice? I don't. But is this the one? Where no, no, you're, no. You're I did the speech. I ended speech up like signing up for today for the speech I was going to do two weeks from now. So. Oh, oh. well, you can you can uh, drop that and uh, sign up for another role if you want to. Okay, I'll just drop me off of that next speaker then. Okay, and yeah, I'm, you, I'm, you know, consider it. You did well. You don't need to redo this one. This that was a good speech, all right? Thank you. Yeah. Uh, what about Jackie? I'm still in. Okay. Right. We have one speaker and everything else is blank. Oh, uh, I can be evaluated. Okay, JR evaluator. Okay. Next. <laughs> I want to uh I want to volunteer for to be speaker again if no one wants it, but um, it's a level five speech. Isn't that supposed to be like longer or something? Like there's prep work behind well, we, that? We, well, are you on level, this level was live, five, Justin. Sorry? Are you on level five? Yeah, unofficially though, I, I need to submit my stuff to Dennis. This, tonight's speech was a long one too, so we had time. Um, okay, yeah, sign me up. Okay. I'll be inspirational thought. Okay. I can I can do word of the day. Do word JR, okay. Well, I can be the Toastmaster and I can evaluate. Nice. Okay. Okay, I'll, I'll fill in the other blanks. And Right now, do we want to tr try to do the election next week, and then if we don't have enough people, push it one more week? Is that what we want to try? You to mean do? Uh, you mean election in two weeks? Yeah, yeah. At the next meeting, yeah, yeah. Let's yeah. let's push for that. Okay, we'll try that. If we don't have enough people, then we'll move it to the following week. Right. Okay. Cool. Cool. Okay. So There's going to be another officers meeting, right? Uh, that's right. Next. Yes, the first meeting back next week will be an officers meeting. Yes. Okay, yeah, okay. De uh, December 1st. Right. First or second. Yeah. 545? Yeah. Yes, 545, uh, December 2nd. Okay. Or second, yeah. And okay. I will have the agenda on um, 
Google Docs too. And Tiffany, uh, I assume you're going to be coming to that one too. Yes. Uh, could uh, could you send me your email so I can include you in the uh, the agenda? Make yeah. sure you get it. Cool. You have my email. Okay. Um, oh wait, I, I do. I do. Never mind. Forget it. Yeah, okay. yeah. I have it. Yeah. Just for information, I think everybody here is an officer. The district just made a few changes on the officer training. Normally, the officer training is given on a certain Saturday. And this year, actually, it's going to be next year. The officer training is set up to be on January 16th. It's only going to be a three-hour training session. But in order for us to get credits for officer training, we need to have at least four of our officers attend. And we need to complete five hours of training. So if we can get four of us to go to the one on January 16th, there are also several weekends that they're having a thing called Toastmaster, I mean, um, leadership, uh, leadership labs. One of them is coming up this Saturday, but they're also, they'll be scheduled later too. So we don't have to all go this Saturday, but there are usually three one hour sessions on those Saturdays. And all we need to do is go to one, I mean, one hour of those on any of those Saturdays so that we end up with two extra hours. So for a total of five hours. So it's kind of complicated, but let me let's see. I think I can put it up real quick just so you can get an idea of the dates. It's virtual, right? Yeah, it's yes. all virtual. Let me put it up here for you. Jackie, quick question while I was checking up. The, um, the file you sent me, Jackie, is it yeah. supposed to be filled out? Yeah. Oh, it came, it came in blank. Did it? Yeah. Oh, wow. I filled it, saved it, and everything. That's odd. Yeah, sorry for the trouble. Sorry. I don't know what to do now. <laughs> You're all right. Uh, I didn't mean to interrupt. I was just That's waiting okay. for you, Dennis, if you want to continue. Anyway, it's in the chat. Those are the dates so you can get an idea of when there are, but they have not uh, fully scheduled the trainers yet. So those are just the dates right now of the training. The only one that's scheduled right now is the one for this Saturday. And I'll be giving a presentation uh, from 12 to 1 on that Saturday. Oh, you're going to be the one conducting the training? Uh, one of the one of the one hour sessions I'll be doing. I'll, I'll be talking about evaluation this Saturday. Uh, from 12 to 1. Oh, I got to see that. Well, if you want, if you go go to the district website, actually, you know. Never mind. It's too much work. Never mind. Just forget. No, I'm just kidding. Actually, if you go to the district um, Facebook page, District 33 Facebook page, uh -huh. put up the uh, information on there and you can, you can register. You need to register for the whichever training that you want. Register by when? Uh, probably at least by Friday. Okay. That way you'll get the link to, to attend. There's two tracks that day. So there's two different, um, two potentially two different registrations. I'll be doing the one in the first track. So if you register for that one, you'll see mine and it's at from 12 to one. And so you don't have to go to all three hours of it. You can just wait till to noon to show up. Right. Makes for anybody that works. Okay. And that's all I have back to you, Mr. President. Okay, great. Thank you so much, Dennis. Um, that concludes our business for this evening. Uh, remember that we did have nominations today uh, and we will be doing our elections the next time we meet. As Dennis already mentioned, we do have an officers meeting uh, the, at the time before our very next meeting, 545, December 2nd. And with that, uh, it was great seeing you guys all here again today. Uh, I can't wait to see you guys. I hope you guys have a happy Thanksgiving and meeting adjourned. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. We'll see you all on the second. Happy Thanksgiving. All righty. That was so difficult. <laughs> what was? Giving that speech.
I had, I couldn't, my face wasn't on the, on the, you know, on the laptop or uh-huh. whatever. And so it was either Dennis's like, you know, it would be his face, <laughs> you know, the one that's like, you know, just a picture. Actually, that would makes me, it, it, you know, cause it looks like you're engaged. But then I would get somebody else who was totally not engaged and oh, they're just I know. like, yeah, yeah. And and I'm bad. I'm guilty. I've done that so many times. But you know, it would have been nice to see myself giving the speech and see my, you know, of course I wouldn't be doing the life. So I wouldn't be able to see myself, you know, in my hand gestures. So anyways. You, you corrected, you, you correct, you interrupted yourself twice during the speeches and it was making me laugh because like the speech was going twice well. this one? Yeah, at the beginning and then at, towards the end, I think. You what asked did if I everybody was, beginning? you asked if everyone was frozen and then. Now, that was at the end and I literally, it looked like everybody like was frozen. Was? Like it just like, because like I said, this one was Dennis who was just a picture of his face and then you know the frozen picture of his face and then it looked like everybody was frozen and I was like oh my god have I been speaking like for several minutes and nobody's looking because it's like I'm the one that's frozen anyways yeah I'm really bad at that but I didn't know I did it twice what was Uh, the other time I wouldn't even correct it because I thought it was funny um I thought I thought it was (laughs) fine so it was a humorous speech. Yeah, there yeah. you go. Anyways, I just had to get that off my chest because it was like, I could have sworn it all froze up. Can I ask, uh, it's probably a good thing I couldn't tell. Were you reading the speech or were you, did you have notes in front of you? Like, how did you do I it? had notes in front of me. There was a couple times I looked, but I think, I th- think I wasn't too, I hope I wasn't too bad. No, no, no. I just saw the papers afterwards and I was like, was she reading it? Did you like, she memorize it? Yeah, I was, I tried to memorize it uh-huh. and, but there were a couple times that I had to like look back 